so if it is cool with you okay so we are live hello hi good morning everyone good morning uh, vishal here so hi students yesterday i had to close the class a bit early 5 minutes early but but don't worry so we'll cover up today all the topics which were supposed to uh, be taught and and all is well so nothing to worry okay we'll we'll just summarize everything very quickly we'll we'll study better okay we'll solve some problems too today okay so good morning good morning everyone good morning everyone from uh, zoom class and good morning everyone from youtube so here we go okay but it's not time yet we'll wait for few seconds okay then we'll begin time yes better okay cool 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 students cool so um as i told you uh, this particular chapter thermo properties was divided into two particular parts if you remember right so what were those two parts so this chapter was divided into uh, uh, let let me write it down here one is the regular what is heat what is temperature what is specific heat very basics and uh, this this class will be about uh, heat transfer and cooling okay so it's all about you know to be cool and how does heat transfer from one object to other object so it will be a very simple topic to learn okay there is nothing much of a tough thing here to be learned uh, almost everything is simple here namaste namaste darshan hi hello okay cool so today we are going to study about heat transfer from one object to other object and cooling how does cooling happens okay as simple as that and uh, so let me give a brief idea about what are we going to do today okay so the brief idea is that very simple it's very common right it's very very common what we are going to study today so imagine you are heating water okay when you are heating water in a vessel you can see all the kinds of heat transfer so there are basically three types of heat transfer you should be very clear about this three types of heat transfer so what are the three types of heat transfer one is conduction okay one is conduction okay other is convection convection and other is radiation so if if you study all these three by today or tomorrow afternoon everything is sorted out we are very very clear with the whole topic everything is will be very very clear okay so let us try to understand see here i am trying to heat this water and uh, if this handle is also made up of metal the handle also becomes very hot right am i clear so if handle is in contact with water and because of contact if the heat transfer that is called as conduction that is called as conduction heat transfer due to contact is called as conduction very simple right okay and even if you uh, keep your hands just near by the vessel you can see that the stove will be hot the stove will be giving hot air right and that is radiation okay that is radiation and convection is you can see that inside water there'll be different layers forming and the layers will move up the layers will move down the layers keeps moving everywhere that is convection okay i am going to discuss these three very clearly okay and we are going to discuss conduction in a much more much more important way okay we'll see what is the rate of conduction how much time it will take to conduct what is the temperature of conduction we'll study that in much much more detail okay so that's that's all the agenda is for today guys we have to study conduction we have to study convection we have to study radiation and as well as one more thing so we we are discussing about transfer of heat so we have to discuss about transfer of cooling also so we usually study this by studying newton's law of cooling newton's law of cooling am i clear to all of you students sure shall shall we begin then are we good to go click on yes if i'm clear hello good morning students good morning Uh, all of you from youtube okay just give me a second yeah so we are good to go okay students let let me start with a very simple question good morning good morning chitanya good morning everyone so let me start with a very simple question we solve two question and we'll start with the chapter okay a horizontal tube open at one end is completely full of liquid okay there is one tube and it's that tube is completely filled of liquid okay and don't worry about that 
the length of the liquid column does not change the temperature okay there's a constant tube like a cylinder like a straw like a test tube okay don't worry about that now the question starts find the relation between gamma the coefficient of volume expansion and alpha the coefficient of linear expansion okay so let me launch a poll for zoom guys and uh, youtube guys please text me in the chat box what is the relationship between volume expansion and linear expansion so option a b c d are given so what do you think the answer will be could you let me know so alpha is equal to gamma gamma is equal to 2 alpha gamma is equal to 3 alpha and option d says um, gamma is equal to 0 you can text me chat box also zoom guys and i, I prefer polling for zoom guys okay good morning good morning Trimalesh. Trimal Shetty, Rajshikar. yes so can you can you give me the answer for this question zoom guys use youtube guys what is the relationship between gamma and alpha the coefficient of linear expansion and coefficient of volume expansion so so this was taught in yesterday's class if you have missed any by any chance yesterday's, yesterday's class if you go to avanti live 5 youtube channel you'll find 23rd june thermal properties part one okay that's correct matthew that's correct patiksha good good so let me end the poll here and uh, let me write down what we're uh, studying yesterday so we studied yesterday that there are three kinds of expansion linear expansion right and superficial or aerial expansion uh, shortcut and volumetric expansion uh, the curve the, there are three constant coefficient of linear expansion coefficient of so superficial expansion coefficient of volumetric expansion good morning good morning so, so there, there are three variables we have learned that already right and they're proportional to one is to two is to three ratio which means alpha or if you want if you want beta beta is equal to two alpha or gamma is equal to three gamma why why is the ratio one is to two is to three because linear expansion happens in one dimension superficial expansion happen in two dimension and volumetric expansion happen in three dimension so now we they're asking about these three quantities so they're in one is to three ratio that means uh gamma is three into one dimension if you want to get three dimensions so this is the right answer good guys good good awesome so Alpha is for one one particular dimension. In volume meter, there will be three dimensions, so I have to multiply it to three alpha. Okay, now that is as simple as that. Okay, so nothing to worry about that. Cool, right? So moving on to uh, one next question. I hope it is all all clear to uh, everyone. So if you have any doubts, please let me know in the chat box. Okay, I'll, I'll just sort it out very quickly. Okay, and recalling phase change. So what was phase change and uh, uh, transfer of heat? We know that. Change in heat dq is given by three formulas, right? From yesterday's class. One is heat capacity into dt, other is ms dt, which is mass into specific heat capacity into dt, number of moles, molar specific heat C into dt. So we know these three formulas. You can apply this whenever there is change in temperature. Change in temperature. Jab, jab change in temperature hoga, heat be add or subtract hoga. That time you have to you can find what is the change in heat by using this formula. And there is one small exception during change of phase, during phase change. That means if ice converts to water, or water converts to steam, or water converts to ice, or steam converts to water. In that case, you can't use this formula because temperature won't change. At that case, heat is is called as latent heat and given by the formula mass into latent heat. Am I clear to all of you this? Good, good guys. Very good for the answer for the previous question. And is this clear? So whenever there is change of phase, use this as formula to find out what is the heat used to change the phase. And this is heat used to change the temperature. Am I clear to all of you? Right? So if it is clear, and so what is H here? H is heat capacity. What is yes? Yes is specific heat capacity. Okay. And C is molar, molar specific heat capacity okay m is mass n is number of moles as simple as that and let me solve a very simple question let me sim sim solve a simple question to understand this concept behind okay there is a 10 kg iron bar okay so there's a metal bar which is at 10 kg and, and this metal bar is very hot okay it's very hot it, it has a temperature of 80 degrees celsius it has a temperature of 80 degrees celsius okay and this is now placed on a block of ice I'm going to take an ice block, okay, and I'm going to keep it on ice block. What will happen? Ice will melt, okay. 
regulation i'll come back to that just let me you know uh, cl clear out this question you keep solving and i'll tell you what is regulations okay yeah so now there is a ice block and ice I, uh, iron rod is kept on the ice block and ice block is at zero degree celsius ice block is at zero degree celsius okay how much ice melts now now we want to understand if i keep this hot rod on ice how much what is the mass of ice that is going to melt is this is a very simple question options are 1.1 kg 10 kg okay um 16 kg and uh, 60 kg what do you think will be the right answer or, or give me an idea if you if you uh, think this is going to take a lot of time just tell me what you have to uh, use here okay okay so so keep keep thinking about that try to uh, th think about it okay and then pratiksha to answer your question here uh, the regulation is very uh, uh, good doubt okay see now imagine okay not this color let me take ha huh, white so imagine imagine uh, pratiksha okay so here there is a ice block block of ice it's very solid right and now you know what will happen if i take a thread if i take a thread and if i keep it on this ice block and at the end of the thread if i tie very large weight if i tie very large weight what will happen do you think ice will split into two no the ice will never split what happens is this wire which is kept at the top of the ice block will slide down as it is okay ice will never break but the wire can slide down slowly the wire will cut a little bit then the upper part will freeze by itself wire will go in the middle upper upper part will freeze by itself again the wire will go in below a little bit the upper part will freeze by itself it goes goes down and uh, this wire will come out of this surface without breaking the ice so regulation is as you asked is melting the ice due to pressure okay even by applying lot of pressure you can melt the ice okay so that is called regulation okay is it is it clear Pradeeksha? is it clear to all of you okay 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 great great guys so let me come back to this problem and let me solve any answers guys good ashri good good so heat given out is equal to heat taken by ice that's very good jalpa correct awesome so let me solve it out now what's going to happen is a general idea how much heat is there in in the iron rod in the iron rod let me write it as part a correct chaitanya very good mega just small mistake can you correct that so uh, point a iron rod or iron bar okay is hot is hot it has a lot of heat and how much heat does it have q is equal to ms delta t that much amount of heat is it's going to have let me find out how much it is q of iron q i is equal to mass of iron is 10 kg okay or 10,000 grams okay because specific heat is in grams try to keep this also in grams okay and specific heat is 0 0.11 and uh, change in temperature uh, this can cool from 80, 80 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. It can cool down completely. So, 0 degrees. I mean, the change in temperature will be 80. Right? It can come from uh, 80 to 0 because it can completely cool down. So, next happens. Therefore, Q of I is equal to how much is this? Uh, let me multiply. Should I use calculator? No, no. It is 88,000. 88,000 calories. Okay, so therefore, this metal rod has 88,000 kilocalories of heat, kilocalories of energy. Now, I'm going to find out using this amount of heat, whatever heat is given by iron rod, if I consume, if the I, 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 ice block consume all of it and it will melt, how much it's going to melt is the question. So, part two, melt ice, melt the ice now. Okay, so what is the heat provided? Heat provided to melt the, melt the ice is 88,000 calories. To melt the ice, how should I use the formula? The formula will be M into L because now the phase is changing. Ice is melting. It's melting from solid to liquid. So it is phase change formula. Latent heat of water uh, fusion or during conversion of water to ice or ice to water will be always 80 calories per gram. Okay, that will be given the question. If it's not given, don't worry. So now 88,000 divided by latent heat of fusion, which is 80 is equal to latent, I mean, is equal to mass. Keep mass there, bring L down, 1010 cancel, 810, okay. And uh, you get 1100 1, 1, or 1.1 1 kg. 
okay as simple as that as simple as that correct correct deepak okay very good is it clear to all of you uh, students is it clear to all zoom and youtube students so now heat is transferring from iron rod to ice block how much it is there in the iron rod 88000 uh, calories and that all the heat will be given to ice and how much it will melt 1.1 kg okay 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 great great cool cool piksha so cool piksha shall i move on to next question if it is completely clear so before i move on to this uh, next slide i want all of you to be very clear is it is it clear if you have any doubts please let me know so today's chapter is the same thing transfer of heat how did that heat from iron rod or iron bar got transferred to ice so that is our today's topic okay so this this is a point of linking between both both yesterday's and today's class okay cool right sure sure great great awesome it's awesome so you to guys i i you know encourage you to keep texting okay if you if you have any doubts okay now coming back to the initial point as i told you that heat transfer is today's topic and there are three ways of transferring heat one is uh, radiation good good anusha radiation okay conduction conduction and convection so why why are there there are three types because heat transfer happen in three different ways radiation what is radiation radiation is a form of energy like electromagnetic wave you have seen that right, x ray gamma ray microwave radio waves so radiation is nothing but that electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic wave also carry energy okay so if heat trans heat transfer happen through radi um, electromagnetic waves it is called as radiation okay and uh, if heat transfer happen through molecular collusion if one one particle hits another particle and one it, it hits another particle there is change in kinetic energy and therefore heat energy so if it happens it happens by collusion if it happens by collusion of molecules if it happens by collusion of molecules then it is called as conduction okay then what is convection convection is movement of molecules it is not collusion but movement of molecules movement of molecules you should be very clear about these two topics they are really really important okay so what is radiation from sun example see we, we see all these three in our daily life from sun there is no medium okay is completely vacuum to earth earth so even from sun in vacuum light rays will reach the earth and you can feel the heat of sun right if you stand in sunlight for long a time sun is going to heat you up and how how did that heat transfer occur because of radiation it happens because of radiation and even after if you go on a very hot day um outside and if you walk in barefoot the ground will be very hot right the ground will be very very hot and how does the heat heat from ground will transfer to your leg if you are in contact with the ground if you are not in contact with the ground it's not going to hurt you right but if you are in contact with the ground it's going to hurt you it's going to hurt your legs so that is because of contact the molecules of ground will transfer heat to your legs that is conduction and if you are riding on a very hot day you can see that air will be rising from ground the air starts to rise to the topmost point right you can see that air gushing like the, the mirage in in road you can see water rising right and it is because of movement of uh, molecules the molecule is not colliding but it is moving from one point to other point and it is called convection all the vapor or all the hot air light air will go up and it is convection so these are the three different ways of heat transfer okay am i clear so now what we are going to do here is we are going to study how does this conduction happen in very very detailed way okay from metal a to metal b or from ground to your leg okay so how does it convection happen what are the parameters conduction depends on we'll study that and radiation i'll cover up in tomorrow's class in 10 10 15 minutes i'll cover it up and we'll start thermodynamics tomorrow okay in the second half of next day's class convection you are not going to study convection at all even in your bsc because convection in includes turbulence as in last class i told you that not last class last chapter told you that turbulence is very very tough to understand alwa so we will not study about turbulence we will only study about radiation and conduction uh, in this chapter conduction today radiation tomorrow am i clear to all of you click on yes and radiation requires medium conduction uh, radiation doesn't require medium okay medium of transfer conduction requires medium convection requires medium okay cool cool great great awesome awesome students so moving on to the next concept okay we'll we'll see how does a heat transfer in detail conduction only about conduction now the whole class is for conduction and cooling okay so see here red red block means it's a very hot block blue block is very cold one okay 
So now I can say that temperature of A is very much greater than temperature of B. Okay, temperature of A is greater than temperature of B. They are they are separated. Okay, but now if I bring them together, what will happen? Okay, I'm going to okay okay seventh. Thank you. So if I if I bring the block A and if I bring the block B and if I keep it together, what will happen? The very hot block A start to lose the heat and give all the heat to B. Okay, now there is transfer of heat. It will move from one point one block to other block. Till when they are going to move? They the heat will move from block A to block B till the temperature of A is equal to B. Okay, that is called thermal equilibrium. Till temperature A becomes equal to temperature B, the heat keeps transferring from block A to block B. Or from hotter object to colder object, the heat will flow until the thermal equilibrium is attained. Okay, cool, right? If the thermal equilibrium is attained, heat flow nahi hoga. Heat flow will stop. Okay, cool, right? And uh, so one more thing here is, it should be very very clear. Heat will transfer from always from hotter body to colder body. Okay, and the the principle of conservation of heat or the principle of conservation of energy will give us a very 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 important formula, which is, uh, you know, heat lost by a heat lost by b will be equal to the heat gained by the cold body. Heat gained by b. This is very important okay so because this is conservation of energy but for this chapter but for this chapter so whatever heat a is going to lose if a loses 30 joules of energy b is going to gain 30 joules of energy there is no loss of energy in between only from the transferring from object a to object b that is called calorimetry this this formula is called as principle of calorie metric calorie is heat metry is measurement or measurement of heat Okay, am I clear to all of you? Cal what is calorimetry? Calorimetry is uh, the principle of conservation of heat. That why if, if an object loses heat, the other object is going to gain same amount of heat. Okay, cool, right? So if it is clear, okay, okay, uh, Matthew, thank you. So moving on, is it clear to all of you? Zoom guys, shall I move on to next slide? YouTube guys, is it clear? Okay, so now now let us zoom out, zoom in, zoom in and check what is happening from A to B. Okay, if you, if you zoom into the, the middle diagram very clearly, and if you check, this is going to happen. Okay, if you're heating an object, see if you're heating this metal rod at one end, metal bar at other end. So, how does heat conduction happen? It, I told as I told you, it is because of collusion of conduction happens because of collusion of molecules. Collusion of molecules. So, what happens is when I provide heat to the particle to the metal bar, the molecules will gain temperature as they gain temperature. Their kinetic energy also increases. There is increase in temperature here, and there is increase in kinetic energy. And they start to move. They wiggle out. They move vigorously, very fast, very fast. They keep colliding. They keep uh, brushing up everywhere. And what happens is, they they collide with neighboring particles also. So similarly, the collusion happens slowly, slowly throughout the metal. And due to this collusion, even the other end starts heating up. Because like if you if you remember, if you are standing in the standing in the long queue, if one guy pushes you more guys will uh, bend over, right? Same thing is going to happen here also. If you're heating up one particle and these set particles are moving very fastly, that collision slowly transforms into uh, heat to other ends. That is how conduction happens. Okay. Cool. Am I clear, guys? So there are. this is the conduction principle, heat conservation and calorimetry, and this is how it happens in a molecular structure. Okay, now. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So uh, then let me solve a numerical. I'll, I'll demonstrate numerical and we'll solve problems together. We'll, we'll try to solve some problems and understand it much, much better, okay? So the question here is very simple. 150 gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius. So let us write it down. Always remember if you write it in a picture, you can solve it very easily. So put 150 gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius. 150 gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius is mixed with 300 gram of water. So this, this is kept in a beaker and you're going to fill this beaker with water. Okay. And 300 gram is very, very much greater, right? So 300 gram of water at 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Latent heat of fusion is 80 calories and a specific heat of water is one calorie gram per Celsius. It's given, no problem. Now, if I keep these two objects together, 
what is the they, they are going to attain equilibrium right so now my simple question is which is hotter here water is hot water is at 50 degrees celsius i ice block is at 0 degrees celsius so water is hot now that very hot water is going to transfer heat from water to ice ice is going to cool down now ice is going to cool down now okay now i want you to find out this heat transfer will happen until both of them e attain equilibrium attain same temperature when they attain same temperature everything is fine okay so now i want you to find out what will be the final temperature what after attaining equilibrium what is the temperature of this uh, system is my question okay how do we solve it any idea okay but but is the question clear 300 gram of hot water one ice cube which is is it going to melt is it not going to melt how much is the final temperature we have to find out okay so I, let me tell you students pay very much careful attention here this problem has one important part my my simple question is will ice melt okay for all of you before you solve the problem answer me this question will the ice melt okay will the ice melt if i keep 150 gram of ice in 300 gram of water will the ice melt any idea should we have to calculate of course but can you guess okay see now I, if, if the ice if you say yes if, if you say yes you have to solve the problem completely if you say no sir the ice is not going to melt then there is no no need to solve the problems stop it there okay because if ice doesn't melt all the water will uh, the energy of water will be spent into convert ice ice melt ab tak nahi hua matlab the final temperature will be 0 degrees celsius because there is no heat to melt the ice so everything is very cool now okay if ice melt the answer is we have to work it out if ice doesn't melt the answer is 0 degrees 0 degrees celsius so how will i come to know whether the ice will melt or not okay if you have any doubts any confusion stop me okay any time will the ice melt okay we'll check how much heat is in water how much heat is in water we'll check uh, water is 300 gram so our ms delta t is the formula to find out what is the heat in water so heat contained in water is what is the mass of water 300 grams specific heat of water is 1 change in temperature is 50 degree hai water ka temperature initially it can go up to 0 degree celsius so change in temperature, temperature will be 50 and therefore heat contained in water is 15000 calories this much amount of heat is there in the water okay now let us check how much heat is required to melt ice q of ice mass into latent heat so to change the phase to phase change okay mass of ice is 150 gram what is the latent heat of fusion it's given it is 80 calories okay to melt 150 gram of ice i need this much amount of heat so which is um, what is how much is this ah, 12000 12000 calories okay is the question very very clear now i have divided into two parts okay good good chaitanya that's a very quick answer now notice yes friends to melt 150 gram of ice i need 12000 calories and how much how much energy i have in the problem uh, with the water 50000 calories yes therefore we have a lot of heat in water ice is going to melt okay very good so is it clear before i solve the next part am i clear to all of your students click on yes respond with your doubts with your queries i can repeat it again once or twice if you want me to repeat so feel free to tell me okay so the total amount of heat in water is 1500 calories that is given because temperature is known mass and the amount of heat required to melt the ice is also calculated by using q is equal to ml okay good good so okay okay matthew thank you so now okay we'll do the calculation now the total amount of heat in water is 15000 in this 15000 12000 is used to melt the ice is used to melt the ice what is the remaining amount of energy the remaining remaining amount of energy is 3000 calories am i clear so out of 15000 total heat 12000 will change the phase so there is no change in temperature due to this 12000 remaining 3000 calories only will increase the temperature therefore q final is equal to mass final into s into delta t what is the final amount of heat remaining 3000 calories to increase the temperature what is the final mass 450 gram because now all the ice is converted to water 300 gram of ice plus 300 150 gram of water becomes 450 total mass okay into specific heat of water is one change in temperature initially uh, it was how much it was zero degree but now i don't know what is the final temperature so keep t as it is 1010 cancel 
45 how much is that? 15 3 is that? 1500 is that, right? No, 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 15 200, right? 15 to 15 20 is that, 15 20 is that. So, did I do the calculation correctly? <laughs> 5 5 9 is 5 9 is 15, 15 3 is 15 to, yeah, 20 by 3, 20 by 3 is the final answer. Okay, 20 is equal to 3 into t, t is equal to 20 by 3 degrees Celsius. Okay, am I clear to all of you? So what I'm trying to say is use the idea. This this chapter is all about imagination. It's all, it's all about thinking. So water by heat uh, that water will melt the ice. In, during melting ice, no temperature changes. Remaining heat will increase the temperature. And and just by making by, by making small algebraic calculation, you can solve the problem. Is it clear to all of you? Is it clear to all of you? Respond to this or no? Okay. So you should you should always remove that phase change part because of the phase change part there is no change in temperature, right? So better remove it. So respond to this on us friends. Okay, Radhika, good, good. So is it clear to all uh, YouTube guys? Are you good to go here? Okay. So say, similarly, the second part is very very. Uh, the second question here is very similar. So you try it out by yourself. Okay, try try to solve it by yourself. We'll we'll you can understand it better. It's very very similar to the say uh, ways we, which which we, which I have thought. Try to do that. Okay. Are we good to go, students? Shall I shall I go to next next topic? With your permission, click on yes or type yes. Yes, sir. We can continue. Then I'll, if you have any doubts, please text the doubt also. Let me summarize. Uh, sir, from where four fifty came in? Okay, Deepak. So Deepak now. There is 300 gram of water and there is 150 gram of ice. Now, after providing this much heat, it will melt now, bro. When it melts, 300 plus 150 is the total volume in container. After melting everything, now I have 450 gram of water. Okay, that is why I, I, I use 450. Okay, James. Okay, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Is it clear, Deepak? Okay. Okay. Good, good. Awesome. Bro. So, moving on to uh, a very important topic for exam, okay, which is rate of heat transfer okay so imagine imagine now uh, this is what happens when you when you stand on a hot ground okay imagine i have a very hot metal object t2 here and uh, then there is one cold object t1 if i connect this hot object okay with this cold object by a wire by a metal wire if i if i keep a wooden spoon there is nothing happen but if i connect them by a metal wire if you touch the metal wire, you're going to feel the heat, right? The heat will start to move from T2 to T1. Heat is going to move. And this is called as heat transfer. Okay. Heat transfer. So what is heat transfer? Whenever temperature T2 is greater than T1, heat will flow or it will move from, from move from, Q will flow from T2 to T1 until, until T2 is equal to T1 until T2 is equal to T1, until the temperature becomes in, they, they keep moving from one point to other point, as simple as that, right? Yeah, cool. So now, okay, if it is moving, how fast it is moving is our question. Rate of heat transfer, I need to find out how fast it is moving, okay? For that, I have to use one simple idea, which is called dQ by dt. dQ by dt, what is dQ by dt? It is called, this is change in heat, dQ is change in heat, okay, divided by dt is change, in temperature change in temperature okay very simple very simple how fast it is moving if decubitate is very fast very large that means it is moving very fastly if decubitate is very small like just like velocity then rate of temperature is very very small that, that is the idea okay that is the idea so now uh, what does it depend on the rate of change of heat depends on directly proportional to difference in temperature t2 minus t1 imagine one is at thousand degrees celsius other is at zero degree Celsius. The heat will flow like anything. It will like just gush out from the hotter part to lower part very fastly. Okay. It, it therefore the rate of flow of heat is proportional to change in temperature. If the difference in temperature is very much, the rate of flow of heat is also very much. Okay. Next, what does it matter on? It matters on the area, area of the cross section. See here, if this area is large, just like imagine like water. Just heat is very, very similar to water. If it is in the same place, the water won't move. If T1 is equal to T2, water won't move. If T2, T2 is greater than T1, water will flow like, you know, like water falls, right? So yes. Then again, if you increase the area of the pipe in a, in a uh, pipe pipeline, the water also will move very much. 
so we can say that area of cross section if the area of this metal is very large area of this metal is very high then lot, lot of water is going to pass up, pass through this similarly lot of heat is also going to pass through it okay then it is inversely proportional to length if if the length of the wire is very very large it will take time to move from one point to another point so it is inversely proportional to length okay and and therefore i'll put one constant that's all oh yeah this is our formula for rate of heat transfer and this is very important because usually questions appear from this part okay out of all the chapter out, out out of all the concept in this chapter this is very important for exam okay rate of heat transfer what is dq by dt let me write it down individually one by one dq by dt is rate of heat transfer or rate of flow of heat heat transfer am i clear to all of you k is called thermal conductivity constant is different metal thermal conductivity a is area area of cross section okay t2 minus t1 is temperature difference l is length l is length length of the wire or length of the metal is it clear it don't it doesn't depend on time okay it don't depend on time time, time is here now rate of heat transfer this this is time t okay dt we are we are trying to check at what like how fast it is going to move we are comparing with the time so there is no term here okay the time i have already used it here okay na cool anusha so time is already there we are comparing with the time so that is the idea okay cool is it is it clear to all of you so this is rate of heat transfer okay so let, let me tell you once more very quickly dq by dt is called rate of heat transfer it, if area increases heat will flow very fast if temperature difference is very much Uh, then again, rate of heat flow is very much. If the length is very very large, it will move slowly. Okay, and it is proportional to conductivity. Wood ka conduct bahut kam hoga. Like the conductivity of wood is very very lesser than conductivity of metal. That is why heat transfer is very very slow in wood, but heat transfer is very very fast in metal because conductivity is very good for metals. Okay, and this is a question which appears all the time in exam. Okay. Okay, so we will solve this question. Pay a little bit attention. Sub take out. It's very simple. Okay, now three rods have thermal conductivities of three k, two k, one k. So there are three different rods and three different sort of rod have three different conductivities. Simple. They are arranged as shown with their ends at one fifty degree. Sorry, one hundred degree, fifty degree, and zero degree. Here it is hundred degree. Here it is fifty degree, and here it is zero degree. now we want to find what is the temperature at junction they want to find what is the temperature t here you can put capital t what is the temperature t here okay that's a that's a simple question and we can do it very easily but i want you to answer me one question from which rod heat which rod has the highest heat i'll call this as rod 1 i'll call this as rod 2 i'll call this as rod 3 which of these three rods have the highest heat highest energy can you tell me Which of these rods have the highest energy? Good, good, good. One, one has the highest energy, right? Because it is at hundred degrees Celsius, it's very, very hot. So, therefore, and one, one fifty is come that little bit cooler, right? Cool, cool like all of you, and this also cool, right? So this temperature, good guys, good. Okay, there is lot of energy in hundred degrees Celsius. Uh, metal rod and from this metal rod metal bar the heat is going to flow am i right so let me rub all of this okay let me make it clear okay now the heat is going to start from 100 degree celsius and it will flow to 50 degree celsius and it will it will flow to 0 degree celsius am i am i correct here it's okay it's okay no problem yeah. so now what going to happen heat is lost by this 100 degree rod and heat is gained by 50 degree rod And heat is gained by zero degree rod. For example, this at at all the time that equilibrium this might become seventy, this might become seventy, and this might become seventy. After everything is seventy, heat will not flow until they become equal. All of these three become equal. Heat keeps flowing. Okay, and this is clear. Heat lost by one, heat lost by one is equal to heat gained by two plus three. This is the principle of calorimetry. Correct, Alva. so what is this 
heat there is 100 degree rod will give the heat out will spread the heat out to 50 degree and 0 degree simple okay and uh, similarly just like current you know what current you remember current i1 here uh, total current is equal to i1 plus i2 kirchhoff's law you can also use the same concept here very very similar okay which is the rate of flow of heat dq1 by dt is equal to dq2 by dt plus dq3 by dt whatever the heat is flowing if there is 10 joules of heat flowing 5 joules of heat will go there and 5 joules of heat will go there the rate of heat transfer is also same okay so therefore if heat lost by 1 is equal to heat i mean gain by 2 plus 3 if i divide all of them by time i'll get the same answer okay dq by D, dq1 by dt dq2 by dt plus dq3 by dt will be equal now let us expand that formula okay which we have learnt in the, in the last slide. For every dq by dt, I am going to expand in this way. Okay. What is dq? Thermal conductivity k into area a into temperature difference. So let me call this temperature middle one as t. What is temperature difference? Heat lost. Initially it was 100. Finally it is t divided by. Okay. Now what would right? L? Right. dq by dt is nothing but k a t2 minus t1 divided by l just write that formula but here conductivity is 3k so put 3k here yeah, all these three are rods are very ha have same dimension so therefore area is same length is same is equal to expand dqt for the rod 2 it is gaining the heat so conductivity is 2k area is a what's the temperature difference final temperature will be t it is going to attain some higher temperature its temperature will be t initial temperature is 50 divided by length l plus we'll expand q3 for the rod 3 its conductivity is k its area is a what's the temperature difference initially it is at zero finally it will be at t always subtract final minus initial okay divided by divided by length l so this is the formula you get just simple man manipulation of this formula will give you the answer both asana okay notice notice now i'll cancel out the similar terms what are the similar terms k k k area 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 length 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 everything is cancelled out now we are left with a very simple expression 3 into 100 minus t is equal to 2 into t minus 50 plus t that's all nothing else is remaining just just now expand it 300 minus 3t is equal to 2t minus 100 minus 100 plus t now small manipulation will give me 400 this minus 100 comes left hand side becomes 400 is equal to minus 3t becomes plus 3t plus 2t plus t 60 therefore temperature is equal to uh, 400 by 6 or 200 by 3 degrees celsius or what is 200 by 3 three ones are 360 degrees celsius 66.6 .6 degree celsius therefore the thermal equilibrium this point t is equal to 66.6 .6 degrees celsius until then there is heat transfer heat will move from other end to other end until the junction becomes 66 when the junction becomes 66 the whole setup this uh, y-shaped rod will become 66 degree attains equilibrium that's correct Chaitanya. very good okay and nothing will happen further on it's in equilibrium now nature becomes lazy Abhi to bahut motion ho tha na, but now nature is lazy because that is the true true you know equilibrium position of nature to be lazy now attend equilibrium everything is sorted Am I clear to all of you? Students, let me know in the chat box. You want me to repeat? You want me to tell you anything? Good, good, good. YouTube guys, am I clear to all of you? So first thing, okay, let me write down the algorithm. You know, algorithm, computer students might know what is algorithm. Okay, good, good, Anisha. Okay, first thing is you have to find out which object is hot and which object is cold. Okay, after finding that, it will flow from hot to cold. So write the equation as principle of calorimeter that heat lost, Q lost is equal to Q gained, Q gained. Okay. After writing that heat loss is equal to heat gained, expand it according to the formula, which I told you, cancel out the term, solve the equation. That's the principle. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yes. It's clear. Okay. So let me give you a question for you. And I want, I'm going to launch a poll and I want all of you to try on this. I'll give you two minutes. So try to uh, use your time and solve it very quickly. Same problem, almost same problem, but I've changed only one value. Okay. So here 
this has a conductivity of 3k here the conductivity is 2k here the conductivity is k all of them have same dimension all of them have same area all of them have same length okay so don't worry about it here it is 100 degrees celsius here it is 50 degrees celsius here it is 20 degrees celsius now i'll change a little bit okay now tell me what will be the final temperature here at the junction they're writing it as theta okay jagan aksa matthew okay thank you thank you cool. so so i have launched the poll just take your time for, tell me which is the i'll keep asking question you can keep solving the problem find out first step find out which is which is the highest temperature object which is hot okay then that hot object will give the temp um, uh, energy to the cold ones will give the energy to the cold ones okay so i can find that here 100 degree celsius is having higher temperature so therefore let me mark in the diagram that heat will flow from 100 degree object and it will go to 50 degree object and 20 degree celsius object correct right good good danush good mega okay very good so that's that's good anand kumar okay so so since it is very similar you could you could solve it very quickly right so now let me write the equation so most of you are already submitting the answers so heat is hot object is 100 degree wala 50 degree and 20 degree wala are cold objects so heat is lost by the first rod and heat will gain it is gained by object 2 and object 3 so i can write dq1 by dt is equal to uh, dq2 by d3 um, uh, dt plus dq3 by dt rate of heat of flow also will be same okay expand the formula first dq can be written as k into a into t2 minus t1 divided by length l heat last last matlab how much it is going to lose okay so initially thermal conduct is 3k area is a what's the loss of temperature initially it was at 100 degrees celsius abhi to loss ho raha hai na so it will be 100 minus some theta final temperature is theta so this is the loss this is the loss amount divided by length l is equal to what's the gain in 2 2 is having a constant thermal conductivity of 2k area a initially its temperature is 50 final temperature is theta gain right gain matlab final will be higher so um theta final minus theta initial 50 degree divided by length l plus k right then a for the third rod temperature initially it is zero but finally it becomes theta divided by length l good guys good all of you kiran abhi vijay matthew Oksa. good good anusha right yeah they just correct Tethane correct so now cancel out what are the terms which you can cancel out k a on both the set both the sets will cancel out along with l along with l you are left with a very simple formula 3 into 100 is 300, 3 into theta is 3 theta is equal to 2 into theta is 2 theta, 2 into 100 is minus 100 and here there is only theta. So solving this becomes, um, oh sorry, here the temperature is 20, right? Here the initial temperature is 20. So theta minus 20, for, I was just forgot to put that. Now 100 comes to left hand side, 20 comes to left hand side, summing up it becomes 420 <laughs> is equal to uh, 6 theta. Therefore, theta is equal to 420 by 6 or 70 degrees Celsius. Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Right? Yeah. Good, good, guys. Awesome, awesome. That's, that's very good. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is all about transfer of heat. They, they might give you three rods or they might give you four rods. They might give you five, six, seven. So, but try to balance it out very clearly. Aram se ho jayega. Okay. Cool. Shall I, shall I go on to next topic then? Is it clear to all of you? So this is, this is all about heat transfer. So now, now we are going to start a new topic for Newton's law of cooling. Okay. Any doubt guys, do you want me to repeat anything? Please let me know in the chat box. If everything is clear. We'll, we'll move ahead. Let me end the poll. If everything is clear, we'll, we'll start Newton's law of cooling. Respond in the chat box. Okay. Good, good. Okay, cool. Sure, guys. Then, then we'll, we'll start cooling. So, uh, till now, we just, just studied about how um, hot objects are going to become cold objects. Similarly, we have one more law to explain that which is called Newton's law of cooling. So imagine now, 
uh, you know your parents give you a, a cup of coffee to drink while 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 uh, listening to the class you forget about it after 2 minutes you take the cup of coffee but it will be very very cold right so what's happening there same thing okay initially when you have hot water or half uh, you know a hot coffee or milk and when you talk with somebody for some time or when you just keep it as it as it is it becomes cold milk so again now what's happening this hot object is losing the energy in the form of radiation okay it is giving heat out i mean uh, the, the cup also will become hot the table also will become hot toda conduction very waste hoga and most of the heat is lost in radiation okay and this loss of heat um, is called cooling right so coffee got cooled out that, that's a simple idea and newton that, that cool guy newton again uh, was thinking about it as i told you right newton is very familiar in uh, newton's law of viscosity newton's law of gravitation newton's law of motion newton's law of uh, uh, velocity speed sound correction newton's law of cooling newton's law of viscosity binomial theorem this is a very smart and genius guy right? i agree and that because of that guy your, your physics is tough now or you could say because of that guy physics is very good now okay and he also thought about this about cooling uh, objects okay and he found out one very very simple principle he found out that rate of cooling okay initially students you should be very clear what is d cube d cube d cube dt is rate of flow of heat okay but this this is what which is equal to k into v into delta temperature by length okay this is what we studied in the last slide but what newton is telling is for a different concept he told that rate of change of temperature itself instead of writing d q by dt he wrote dt by dt how oh, it's confusing right small t is for time capital t is for temperature so we will we'll use delta for temperature to be more to avoid confusion okay delta i mean theta sorry theta is for temperature theta is for temperature am i clear what is d q by dt d q by dt is rate of flow of heat d theta by dt is rate of cooling it is called as rate of cooling two very different things very very different things this gives me how how fast the heat is going to flow and this gives me how fast the heat um, object is going to cool okay but they are very similar but not same because q is proportional to t q is proportional to temperature right but they are not equal they are similar okay now so now we are going to study about this d theta by dt okay now now imagine initial temperature is t1 and final temperature of the coffee is t2 and atmosphere ka temperature is t0 i am clear to all of you what is t not t not is atmosphere temperature t2 is final temperature okay and t1 is initial temperature initial temperature so this is the idea and if you, if you know what is t1 what is t2 and what is t not we can understand newton's law in a simple way newton told that the rate of cooling which is d theta by dt the rate of change of temperature by time is proportional to difference in temperature of this coffee and atmosphere if coffee is very very hot initially cooling zyada hoga okay so he told that it depends on temperature difference just like here okay theta initial minus theta uh, atmosphere temperature difference that's all nothing else he told that rate of cooling depends on rate of i mean de- depends on difference in temperature because it is cooling it is usually written as minus but we can forget it okay rate of cooling so loss in temperature minus d theta by dt depends only on uh, the temperature difference between the object and the temperature difference between the atmosphere between the atmosphere this is the newton's law of cooling that is all that is all okay so but but i'll tell you this is very it becomes very complicated sometimes okay so we have two parts okay let me read the general principle here he told that cooling minus d theta by dt is is equal to constant k So some constant k, random constant k into temperature of object minus temperature of temperature of atmosphere or temperature of surrounding. Okay, so this is Newton's law of cooling. Am I clear to all of you? And there are two ways to calculate. Okay, if the difference is small, if theta minus theta not is small, if the object temperature difference is small, then you can use this this formula. Minus d theta by dt is equal to okay theta average minus theta of surrounding divided by okay no, nothing to divide by that's all that's all okay so this is this is the formula for smaller temperature 
what is delta average so initially i told you that the temperature will be very hot initially after some time the temperature is going to cool down and the surrounding temperature is t naught so theta average is nothing but initial temperature plus final temperature divided by 2 this is theta average and this is newton's law of cooling for small temperatures 50 to 40 degrees celsius cooling over so we can use this 50 to 10 degrees celsius if it is very large difference then you have to use different way am i clear so i am saying that for small change in temperature if this is like 10 or 20 or 10 or 5 or 15 degrees celsius if the change is very 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 small then you can write the rate of cooling due to dt is proportional to the constant number k and theta average instead of theta object here we can write theta average minus surrounding and theta average is nothing but theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by 2 okay that is for small values of temperature and if it is very large what will you do if it is very large you integrate it that's all nothing to worry so right minus uh, dt by dt as it is is equal to k into theta of object minus theta of surrounding t naught just write it as it is and integrate it that's all minus d theta by dt okay send the dt to the right hand side bring theta minus theta naught to the bottom part is equal to k into dt and integrate both the sides at time t is equal to zero temperature is t initial at time t is equal to some time temperature t becomes final so it, it is t1 initially then for some time it is t2 but integrate kya ho jaga. so what is the integration of this minus of ln theta 1 minus theta 2 upper limit is theta 2 minus lower limit is theta 1 is equal to k dt the integration of dt becomes t and this minus i can send it here this is the formula guys this is the formula for newton's law of cooling at large temperature let me summarize it's very confusing i understand let me summarize okay so cooling minus d theta by dt is proportional to okay temperature difference between object and surrounding okay now initially temperature is t1 final temperature is t2 this is initial this is final and surrounding temperature is t naught this is a general idea now clear okay good good uh, is it clear to all of your students just let me know for small changes use this formula minus d theta by dt is equal to constant k into theta average theta average minus theta you can use this formula and what is dt dt can be written as t2 minus t1 and what is dt t2 minus t1 you can you can expand that no problem but this is a formula okay this is for small small values and for large change in temperature we integrate it as usual okay so integration of minus d theta by theta minus theta naught is equal to integration of k dt and you get an expression ln of theta minus theta naught upper limit is theta 1 and lower limit is theta 2 uh, theta 2 minus theta 1 is equal to minus k into t so you get this kind of integration term and you can solve it if you, th that is for larger objects I mean large change in temperature am i clear to all of your students I, I'll, I'll don't worry this looks very complicated but actually solving problem is very simple okay so let me let me solve one problem here, okay to make you very uh, comfortable there's a cup of coffee and cup of coffee is initially at 50 degrees celsius okay now it cools to 40 degrees celsius okay it cools to 40 degrees celsius in five minutes five minutes come out like a temperature okay now so now the next question is the surrounding temperature theta naught so theta naught is given which is equal to 20 degrees celsius so don't worry about uh, that at all what's the next concept the surrounding temperature is 20 degrees celsius in what further time it will cool to 30 degrees celsius okay from 40 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius how much time will it take how much time will it take is the question my my doubt for you guys is answer me this question all of you okay is it greater than 35 minutes? Is it, is it greater than 5 minutes or is it lesser than 5 minutes? From 50 to 40, it took 5 minutes. From 40 to 30, will it take 5 minutes? More than 5 minutes or less than 5 minutes? Which do you think will happen? Well, which, is, it, is it more than 5 minutes or is it less than 5 minutes? Exactly, right? Good, good, good. So now, now you can compare, okay? Compare now. Initially 50 and uh, surrounding is 20. So difference is how much? Difference is 30. Okay. So 30 is very large number. And, and in second case, check in second case, initial temperature is 40. 
अटमोस्फेर टेम्परेचर इज ट्वेंटी सो डिफरेंस इज ट्वेंटी रेट न्यूटन लॉ टेल दट डिफरेंस ज्यादा हो गया तो टाइम ज्यादा ज्यादा पड़ेगा राइट इट टेक मोर टाइम टू कूल डाउन सो नाउ बिकॉज हियर द डिफरेंस इज वेरी लेस इट विल टेक लॉट ऑफ टाइम टू कूल करेक्ट करेक्ट गुड गुड गाइज गुड गुड ऑल ऑफ राइट ओके मोस्ट ऑफ राइट बाई It will take more than five minutes. No, not less than five minutes. More than five minutes. If the rate of cooling is large, if the rate of temperatures are cooled down, ज़्यादा जल्दी हो जाएगा. Wait, let me solve it. You'll understand. Okay. So there are two conditions, friends. I always tell you that if there are two conditions, write two formulas. Okay, two formulas. Part A. Okay. So in part A, what's going to happen? According to Newton's law, minus d theta by dt is equal to theta average k into theta average k into Theta average minus theta naught. This is the formula, right? This is the general formula. Minus keep it as it is. What is d theta by dt? This is difference in temperature. This is theta one. This is theta two. Difference in temperature. How much will be? So it is fifty uh, minus forty is the difference in temperature divided by change in time. How much time it took? It took five minutes. It took five minutes. Is equal to right constant k as it is. Don't worry and uh, What is theta average? Fifty and forty. The average. How much will be? It is t one plus t two by two is the theta average. So fifty plus forty is ninety. Ninety by two. Fifty plus forty. Okay, divided by two minus. What is the uh, atmospheric temperature? Twenty. Twenty. So by solving this, you get very simple equation like this. Okay, which is minus ten by five minute is equal to k into um average is 45 45 minus 20 is 25 this is equation number 1 equation number 1 okay now so similarly do it for the second one okay do it for the second k into 25 so i will box it up we box it up so next part in the next part pay careful attention what's happening now it is cooling from 40 to 30 so this general formula d theta minus dt is equal to k into theta average minus theta not hai na How, what is it? it becomes change in temperature 40 to 30 change in temperature is 10 what is change in time don't know so keep t as it is right k constant as it is what is average between this blue color 40 plus 30 is 70 70 k average is 35 okay what is the atmospheric temperature 20 so this becomes 15 this becomes 15 so this is for the second situation i hope it is clear to all of you right so this is for the second situation now there are two unknowns there are two equation problem solved The best way to solve this is not to convert it to linear equation, but divide one by two. Divide one by two. So here, hundred minus ten by five divided by minus ten by t is equal to k into twenty five divided by k into fifteen. K into fifteen. So minus ten minus ten cancel out. Jaga denominator denominator goes to numerator. T by five is equal to k and k will cancel out. This is five by three. Therefore, t is equal to twenty five by three. What is twenty five by three? Twenty five by three is um, three one zero three two three eight zero eight point three three minutes. So we take eight point three three minutes. Okay, so it is as as most of it will it will take more time. Okay, so good good Ankit yeah correct sab sab bina tha okay so the idea is simple temperature difference ज़्यादा हो गया तो cooling बहुत जल्दी होगा temperature difference बहुत कम हो गया तो cooling थोड़ा uh, मैं ना Delay will happen. Right, it will be a bit slow. So, if if there is a lot of difference in temperature, it the, it takes very less time. Okay, you can see the temperature and time are inversely proportional. Right, the temperature and time are inversely proportional. Cool, cool, guys. Am I clear? Am I clear to all of you? Any doubts? Is it is it paka? Any doubt, guys? Please please let's respond to me in the chat box. Is it completely clear? do you have any doubts okay so i, I believe you are good to go right so let let me give a very very simple problem for you to try okay respond to yes or no okay good good okay anisha so now let me give you a simple question here the water cools from 60 degree celsius to 50 degree celsius in 10 minutes in 10 minutes okay and uh from 50 degrees celsius to 42 degrees celsius in next 10 minutes okay now they want to find if this is the case what is the, what is the temperature of surrounding what is the temperature of surrounding 
will you try right uh, let me launch the poll for uh, uh, zoom guys zoom guys keep trying i'll give you 2 minutes to work this out okay because as i told you this these two formulas are really really important for your exams okay so try to please solve this problem if you are able to solve this problem just just imagine if you are writing both j and main four marks is fixed because this is going to appear at least once in both of the exam that is for sure both of this both of both of this uh, rate of heat flow rate of cooling this is a very good good concept okay yeah so as i told you students what you should do you should write one one uh, situation for 60 to 50 and one more situation for 50 to 42 uh, simplify it divide both of them so uh, if this is a general idea in complete physics whenever you have two situations write to two conditions separately either you can solve as linear equation or divide both the equation but somehow we'll get the answer okay that's the idea there are how many unknowns are there you need that many situations right here i don't know constant here i don't know temperature difference so i need two equations cool so uh, you can see the difference in temperature is 60 to 50 both chota hai 50 to 40 to chota hai so i can use this first formula which is newton's law of cooling due to small changes due to small changes which is minus d theta by dt is equal to what was that um, just forgot k into theta average minus theta naught yeah, you can use this formula hmm? right so uh, do you do it sir is sir is thermodynamics in the next part test no bro thermodynamics is not in the next part okay let me tell you what are the syllabus for the next part test okay so 50% of questions will come from uh, properties of fluids okay and thermal properties thermal properties and 50% of questions will come from okay um, which are which are the forgot the previous chapters rotation gravitation okay and the properties of solids okay 50% 50% i mean the recent week will carry the highest weightage something like that okay so cool there is no thermodynamics because thermodynamics and oscillations will be there for next next saturday okay kiran kiran good try good try and and uh, so many of them tried here in zoom tejas mega good good yeah i agree with that okay good good kiran for trying okay awesome awesome yeah so now as as i told you guys let us draw the conditions very clearly now okay situation 1 and situation 2 just a minute abhijarani good for trying awesome awesome okay so first condition the formula is here okay so notice this i substituted formula directly change in difference for the lo1 is 60 to 50 60 minus 50 divided by 10 minutes minus n as it is okay is equal to k into theta average 60 and 50 ka average kitna hoga 55 55 minus theta not i don't know surrounding temperature so keep theta not as it is okay that is one thing so when you when you solve this you get uh, minus 10 by 10 is equal to k into 55 minus theta not okay so this is situation 1 right yeah so next let us do it for the second one i'm, I'm going to apply the same equation for situation 2 what's going to happen in situation 2 very simple so here you can see that change in temperature is 50 minus 42 negative of good good anjali okay divided by what's the time taken 10 is equal to constant k into the temperature difference is how much average average is 50 plus 42 divided by 2 91 9, 92 92 is 46 46 minus theta naught. That is the equation number two. And when you solve this, when you simplify it, you get as a simple formula: minus eight by ten is equal to k into 46 minus theta naught. So yeah, that's all. You got two equations. Simplify the two equations, you'll get the answer. Okay, you'll get the answer. So uh, what are the what what's going to be? That's correct, Chinna. That's correct, Bhuvneshri. Okay. So minus ten by ten equation number one divided by Minus eight by two equation number two is equal to k by forty six minus theta naught equation. Oh sorry, k by fifty two minus theta naught equation one divided by k by forty six minus theta naught equation two. Ten ten cancel minus minus cancel k and k cancel. This is ten by eight is equal to fifty five minus theta naught by forty six minus theta naught. Just multiply this, you get four sixty minus 
then theta naught is equal to uh, what is 55 into it? Let me use calculator. Okay, 55 into it. It's 440. 440 uh, into 8 theta naught. Okay, so then then you get a very simple situation here. It will be 20 is equal to 22 theta naught. 2 theta naught. Ha. So for theta naught is equal to 2 by 10. 2 by 20, 10 hoga. Answer is simple. Okay, so therefore. Two ones are two tens are. Therefore, change the atmospheric temperature is theta naught. Good, good. All of you are right. Okay. So let me end the poll here. Am I clear? 88% correct. Good, good. Good polling. Okay. So I'm clear to all of you, right? So this is how this is all simple as it is case. So whenever they ask you to whenever they ask you to find what is the temperature at junction, you can think like current. Current going from one R1 will divide into current 2 and current 3. I is equal to I1 plus I2. Same idea we can use here and solve it. And uh, for uh, Newton's law of cooling, if it is a small temperature, you can use the average formula. If it is a very large, if the difference is like 30, 60, 100, then use integration, use calculus and solve it. Use calculus and solve it. Okay. I'm clear to all of you. Okay. So then, then take this as homework. There are three liquids, liquid A, liquid B, liquid C. If you mix them together, then what is the final temperature? What is the thermal equilibrium temperature is the question. Take it as homework. Okay. So let's, let's yes, yes, uh, Anusha, I'm going to do that. that. That will be done tomorrow. Okay. So here, this is the topic for tomorrow, radiation physics. In radiation physics, tomorrow I'll be telling what is black body radiation, what is a regular body, what is phase displacement law. Okay. That means when you heat an object, initially it will become orange, then yellow. Then uh, bluish, I mean, then it becomes very light yellow, then becomes white, then becomes blue, very, very blue. So that is called displacement law. That is explained by something called as Wayne's displacement law. I'll explain Wayne's displacement law tomorrow. And one simple and very important concept for GE advance is Stephen's law. Okay. I'll explain Stephen's law tomorrow. And I will start thermodynamics tomorrow, second half. Okay. We'll, we'll see what is pressure, volume, temperature, uh, how to use the equation, what's the work done in. Uh, isothermal, isobaric, adiabatic, and uh, isochoric process. We'll, we'll see that tomorrow. Okay. I'm not going to skip radiation physics because question appear from them. So I, I'll do that in the next first 15 minutes or 20, 30 minutes of tomorrow's class. Okay. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So the next three minutes uh, remaining for the class. If there are any doubts, please ask the doubts. Okay. Okay. So, and, and Zoom guys, please, you know, uh, can, come to me please, before you okay. Zoom guys, you can, you can, res, you, know, you can give me the feedback in uh, the chat box. Okay. So you want more problems or you want less problems or you want more theory or less theory. You want me to go fast or you want me to go slow. Whatever you want to say, you can, you can just text me in the chat box. Okay. And that's all for today. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Pradesh. Thank you, Deepak. Okay, Abhijah. Okay, so ho hope it is clear. Hope it is some of help. It is up the class was of some help. Okay. First question. First question. Uh, which one? Which one? Yeah, like another question. What was the first question I asked? Um, okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Kiran. Ah, that alpha, right? Okay, okay, okay. So the first question was, see, the the there is linear coefficient of expansion alpha, there is superficial coefficient of expansion beta, and uh, then there is, uh, you know, this one volumetric coefficient of expansion gamma. So here there is that there is a tube, and inside this tube there is liquid. There is liquid. The tube is not changing the length. But liquid is expanding. Liquid is going like, like just like thermometer. Whenever you keep thermometer to check the temperature of our body, the mercury increases, right? The, the level of mercury rises up. So they're think, they're asking about the liquid. The liquid is going to expand. Uh, so if the liquid is going to expand, what is the relationship between the alpha of liquid and uh, uh, gamma of liquid? Okay. They're, they're telling that the, the test tube is not at all going to expand. Only, only the liquid is going to expand. Okay. So therefore, three dimensions volume to uh, linear, three times. Okay. 
okay, 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 cool, cool. Cool guys, take care, bye bye. Okay, see you all tomorrow with uh, radiation physics and uh, thermodynamics. Okay, ma'am, bye bye. Bye bye, YouTube guys, take care, stay home, stay safe. Bye, all of you, okay. Uh,